Corpse Husband, aka Corpse, is a faceless YouTuber and musician known for his strikingly deep voice, charismatic personality, and an identity shrouded in mystery. Corpse began his career on YouTube in 2015, in which he became well known for his ominous horror story narrations. Secretly behind the scenes, Corpse was busy crafting his own unique musical style and rocked the industry with his debut single release in 2020, all while garnering extensive mainstream attention for his incredible plays in the immensely popular social deduction game Among Us. Since the last time I sat down with Corpse, he's exploded in popularity, expanding from 1.2 million subscribers to the 7.2 million subscribers he's achieved today, not to mention his songs, which have garnered over 200 million plays since then. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'm going to be sitting down with Corpse to learn what it's like to live a completely anonymous life while simultaneously becoming possibly one of the most popular creators and musicians of this generation. Has this meteoric rise to super fame been a blissful experience as a seemingly infinite amount of doors have been opened for Corpse and his career? Or has the added pressure of millions of new fans and new critics with their own expectations and layers of scrutiny cause an existential struggle behind the scenes for someone who's already opted to keep their identity completely hidden from the outside world. Hello, Corpse. Hello. Thank you so much for coming on here and teaching me about the world of Corpse Husband. <laughs> I got a whole world to myself now. The last time you were on here, that was the first time you were ever on camera, right? The first time you ever had cameras pointed at you? Yeah, it was fucking terrifying. Part of me thought that you were not gonna end up doing it because it was, I know it was so nerve wracking for Dude, you. Dude, it was so scary. Before we did that interview, you were like laying on the couch right outside, <laughs> just like, I didn't know that you saw that. Like, I wanted to give you space, but I was like, your anxiety is not a joke. Yeah, yeah, because I was last to do the interview, so I had longer to think about it. You've blown up massively since we last spoke. How has that all been for you? Good and bad, of course. There are a lot of amazing things that have came from it and also very difficult things to deal with that came from it as well. So, I mean, overall, it's a, it's a positive, of course. Has it been easier to keep your identity hidden considering everyone wears a face mask now thanks to COVID? It's been easier because of that because nobody looks at me like I'm a, I'm a freak anymore when I wear a mask in public. But also, since I've grown so much, I feel like everyone's staring at me every time I leave my house. So it's gotten scarier. Do you have to like change your voice when you're out in public? I avoid talking at all costs anywhere in public. Do you think that you're more confident now in your decision to always be faceless than, than you were before? Last year was at my breaking point with it, where I was just gonna like be less careful until it inevitably happened. And now I'm, I feel like I have to be really, really careful again. I, I feel like I would be happier in a world where I could be myself openly and not worry about like hiding from everybody. But I do think it's also the best decision for me because I don't think I could handle that many people like judging me at once. I wish I could say it gets easier as you go along, but I think the reality is that you just get more used to having people constantly shit on you. Yeah, it's hard to get thrown into like the deep end of that all at once. When I first started, I got to reveal my face to 10 people and then 20 yeah. people and 30 people and it grew slowly over time. You have all these expectations for what you should look like, especially with your voice that's so unique. So throwing yourself out there, it'd be like literally throwing yourself to the wolves. And like, like you said with you, it was gradual and with the gradual part of it comes the haters being gradual as well. But for me and people that blow up very quickly, it's all of that at once. There's no gradual like learning of that. And, and I've seen some people uh, you know, spreading fake DMs that have been photoshopped to show like, oh, Corpse uh, revealed his face and look what he looks like. And I know, because I've seen you, granted you had a mask on, but I've seen you, you, you don't look anything like these people. <laughs> but these poor people are getting completely shit on for looking that way. They're taking the pictures from real life people. I don't, I don't know if they end up seeing it. And then because people think it's me, they just shit all over, even though they're normal looking people. So that's yeah. what normal looking people get for people that think it's me, then I can't imagine if it was actually me. Because people treat popular people as if they have no feelings and no heart. In people's heads, I'm more of like, 
a character or like a brand or like an anime character or something yeah. so they don't treat me as if I'm an actual person. Have you had any close calls with your identity being discovered since we last talked? Yeah, definitely. I don't know how specific I should get with them, but but definitely. Why? Because yes. if you're specific, they might know how oh, yeah. close it was yes. and it might reveal yes. it to them. Yes, exactly. Yeah. They know. They know 100%. <laughs> like Have you experienced any burnout or fatigue? now knowing just how many people are watching you and expecting something very specific from you? Dude, absolutely. Like every single day, I feel like that. Every day is the last day people will care about me online. So there are tons of people that think your voice is fake. <laughs> there were actually tons of people that were surprised to find out that your voice in my last video was your real voice. There is not a single picture of me from before YouTube with my entire face in it. They thought that it was to mask your identity further. A lot of people think that. It's usually angry men. <laughs> I'm not competing with anybody, dude, I'm just talking. There's even a ton of TikToks of <laughs> young kids, little boys who are faking your voice. For everyone has been wondering, yes, this is my real voice. I think it's super cute. I think it's very funny. Like, is that flattering for you? I get a lot of DMs like that from Guys are like, bro, I sound just like you. And then I get a voice <laughs> message and I'm like, yeah. You're, you're creating a whole generation of people who feel like maybe having a deep voice can be a cool defining factor. It is super <laughs> fascinating. How do you feel when people almost fetishize your voice? If they want to send me like a 10 page email about everything they want to do to me because my voice, then I'm like, okay, that's a little weird. Have you gotten emails like that? Oh yeah, I've gotten such weird emails dude what is the general gist they'll think i'm not like a real person and I don't, I don't mean that like metaphorically i mean like literally they think i'm like some kind of like soul being can you clear up once and for all why your voice is so deep my voice is just primarily deep because it's it's deep i genetics i i guess corpse's Maybe. mom sounds just like him corpse's <laughs> grandfather and grandmother both sound like that thanksgiving it dinner just sounds like <laughs> I do have a medical condition and it does contribute to my voice, but not as much as everybody says it does. Is that GERD? GERD has like a spectrum to it. They put a scope down my throat through my nostrils and my throat is corroded and it, it's like touching my vocal cords. So it's, it's actually vibrating on your vocal cords and kind of adding that deep raspiness to it, or at least a little bit of it. I'm not sure, like there's no way to measure it. Before we continue learning about the world of Corpse Husband, if there's ever been any artwork of you that's been so accurate that it scares you. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. I'm gonna text it to you. Oh shit, dude, that is exactly you. I wanted to remind you all that you can watch the first interview I did with Corpse last year in the I Spend a Day with Faceless YouTubers episode, which I'll conveniently put a little link up in this corner for you to click with your cold, dead, only hands. And we also just released the audio optimized version of that interview to our new podcast, which I'll include a link down in the description below as well. And I'd also like to thank BetterHelp Online Therapy for sponsoring this episode. As you know, sponsors allow us to continue this series and support all all the people who help make this series possible behind the scenes and has also allowed us to work with some incredible artists who were able to bring Corpse to life for this episode. I'm sure many of you know, but I've been a huge proponent of therapy since I started going about four years ago, which has been hugely helpful for me. But therapy can be whatever you want it to be and generally just offers tools to help you with motivation, depression, anxiety, stress, insecurity, or whatever you specifically need. If you use it the way I have, it can really help you stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and it can help you start feeling better because you do deserve to feel happiness, whether or not you feel like it right now. BetterHelp has been continuing to improve throughout the years and screens all therapists to ensure that they have experienced and are licensed and certified and provides custom online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your licensed therapist so you don't even have to see anyone on camera if you don't feel comfortable with that. Therapy can be really expensive and the cost of finding a therapist you actually like and trust can really start to rack up, which is why BetterHelp offers a more affordable alternative to in-person therapy, where you can start communication with your licensed therapist in less than 48 hours. So thanks again to our sponsor, BetterHelp, who's giving I Spent a Day with viewers and listeners 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Padilla. That's better betterhelp.com slash Padilla. Now back to the world of Corpse Husband. So you gained millions of fans after you started streaming Among Us. 
how did the whole Among Us situation happen? I mean, I saw you started to get invited <laughs> literally on some of the, the biggest channels on YouTube. I was just hanging out on Discord and then Dave Buena Band messaged me and was like, yo, do you want to play Among Us with PewDiePie on stream right now? And I was like, okay, sure. You could have slept through your huge boom in success. Yeah, like completely. How many years were you working on music before you started to release music? A lot of people think that I just started making music. I was making beats and stuff when I was 12. I had like 30 plus songs before I released anything. I've had stuff with rock elements. I've done stuff with singing elements. I've f***ed around and made country songs before. Like, <laughs> <laughs> How would you define your sound now? Dude, I have no idea what to call it. I mean, it's got a lot of bass. <laughs> <laughs> your demeanor is very different in some of your tracks than what you <laughs> display otherwise with lyrics such as choke me like you hate me but you love me Loki want to date me when you f me <laughs> choke me like you hate me but you love me Loki want to date me when you f me is that a character persona that's separate from you it's definitely me i mean like all my music is me besides maybe like the, the cat girl song was kind of made as a joke as far as everything else it's all me it's exaggerated parts of me for the sake of expressing myself it's not really a character it's an element of you that we don't get to see otherwise yeah i mean I well can't. some people get to see <laughs> your song agoraphobic was probably your most vulnerable track yet i can't do shit right i can't learn my lesson i can't do shit right to get any depressants illness and welfare rob my adolescence my friends probably hate me can't answer a message was it liberating to open up about your struggles through your art. To drop that song after I dropped E-Girls Are Ruining My Life, which is a com complete juxtaposition from that one. A lot of people were telling me like, it would be career suicide to do that. You were able to kind of <laughs> give the middle finger to people yeah. who s tried to box you into one Completely. certain genre. Corpse yes. isn't about one specific sound. I get bored way too quick to, to do one thing. Is there anything you could tell us about what you're working on now with your music, any collabs or anything that you're developing behind the scenes? Yeah, I just had this song with Machine Gun Kelly. It's f***ing insane. <laughs> like, it, it's very raw and aggressive. I know that you just recently were diagnosed with something. Can you go into that? Can you explain what that was like? Well, I had a nerve conduction study where they basically shock you and put needles in all your muscles and it's like enjoy the process. <laughs> yeah, it's epic. For the people that have been around for a long time, they've known I've had problems with my, my arms and stuff like that. They're pretty sure that what they found has to do with that. I'm just kind of emotionally dealing with the fact because it's not curable. What did they say about it? She was like rushing me at the door. I'm like, is there any way to like treat this or face this and i was like have you seen anyone be cured of this and she was like i've never seen it before how has that affected the way that you approach everything going forward uh, i'm a pretty pessimistic person as as you know what gave that away <laughs> i haven't felt like anything has been real for like a very long time i'm mourning ever having a, a normal healthy functional life again you're, you're grieving the fact that your memories of how you used to be, you know, what, what what defined you and your sense of self will no longer be attainable in the same way. And then with the blowing up and everything, like there's just so much has happened to me in this past year. Do you kind of feel like you're just floating through the yeah, world in a uh, sense? Dude, absolutely. Like people in their early 20s or whatever don't get it. And then you ask like, why? Why is this happening to me? Like yeah. what? I don't, I still don't have an, I don't, I, don't, I still don't know why it happened. I have no f***ing clue why I just randomly woke up one day and couldn't move my arm. Like, I have no f***ing clue. I think I've dissociated so much to where I just yeah. don't care anymore. What kind of symptoms are you dealing with daily? It's just a lot of pain. I'm having to change how I sit every two seconds right now in this conversation with you just so that my entire arm doesn't go numb and like, I, at my absolute worst, I remember crawling to the door to get groceries and barely being able to do that i tried to pour cereal and then when i went to like lift the spoon to my mouth to eat it i like i couldn't do it what kind of a lifestyle did you have before you started experiencing all these health conditions i was a very very active person i i weight lifted most days of the week imagine like 
the worst physical shape you've ever been in in your life mm. and also having millions of people expecting you to look the best you've ever looked in your life and you yeah. can't even be like oh i'll work towards that you just literally can't what have been some of the the downsides or struggles that come along with all of this relentless expectations and i get so much hate online every single day people already treat celebrities with their faces out there famous people with their faces out there no matter what they do as if they're a dumpster and then yeah. here you are without your face out there so people get to treat you even more like you're not a real person at all i did a tweet on twitter just to prove a point i did a voice memo and i just breathed <laughs> the infamous corpse breath tweet. People will get mad at anything that's popular. I guarantee you I'm going to get so much shit for literally breathing. They'll be like, oh my god, you guys are so obsessed with him. Like, look, at it. he's just breathing and then like, or he's trying to breathe super sexually or like, it's literally just breathing, but people want to spin it to be that. Let's try it. Let's try it. Wait. <sighs> <laughs> How was that? Did that did that make you feel some type of way? A lot of people say that my supporters are toxic and blah blah blah, but then they're the ones going out of their ways to like poke at them. So many people do that, and I see that with different parts of the internet all the time. People shaming people in a in a hateful way for what they see as that person not being a good enough person. And yet yeah. that person shaming that person for not being a good enough person is being a very bad person. It's absolutely fucking twisted. People just don't like things that are popular. People are comparing me to massive artists who I don't even want to be compared to. They hear some super minimal thing I recorded in my room next to someone like Lady Gaga or something, and they're like, they have to be who's better. Right. Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to be better than anybody. People have my notifications on just to hate me. Fuck, dude, every yes. single time I release one of these videos, I immediately have 10 dislikes. I'm like, whoa, whoa. You, you turn on notifications because you want to dislike <laughs> the video? That's how much time you want to give to me? If someone wants to keep my notifications on so they can watch e-girls hit 100 mil, I don't give a fuck, dude. <laughs> like, what's, what's next? Are you going to continue uh, dabbling in those areas or are you going to expand in other ways as well? I like f***ing with the world. It's fun. I, <laughs> as much as everybody gets mad at me, I think it's funny that people get mad at a blank tweet my fans are in on the joke too like that's what the people who hate me don't get is they see a breathing tweet with 300,000 likes but the 300,000 people are liking it just to piss off those people so they're actually right. playing into it you're literally trolling people and these people are getting pissed because it's become a meme and they don't even realize it's a meme it's a strand of my hair it's a picture of my hand <laughs> like all they're doing is clicking a like button on it and that's literally where it ends but people who see you know, 1.3 million likes on a photo of you holding a strand <laughs> of your hair. They think that people are like jerking off to this photo. It's like, no, it's they just click the yeah. like button. That's where it ends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Generally. I'm sure there's a couple for people. The, yeah, did. For, for the most part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we won't go into the fact that some people have gotten, you know, a tattoo of the of your yeah. strand of your hair. It's just fun. Before we continue learning even more about the world of Corpse Husband, I wanted to take another quick moment to thank our sponsor, ExpressVPN, for continuing to to support this series. ExpressVPN is an app and browser extension that protects your privacy and security online while allowing you to place your device anywhere in the world by hiding your IP address. So you could experience the internet as if you were browsing from that region, which is especially helpful if you want to stream something you don't usually have access to in your region. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. So let's say you don't understand some of the references Corpse makes in his songs and you want to watch Death Note and it's not available in your region. Bam! You're now in a region that gets you and the Shinigami that that you may or may not have. She say I kill her cat like, bam, don't f with cats, now accessible in your beautifully decorated, comfortable home. ExpressVPN actually works with any streaming service like Hulu, BBC iPlayer, YouTube, Crunchyroll, and all the others, so your world feels damn near infinite at this point. Visit expressvpn.com slash Padilla to learn more, or click the link down in the description to get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. Again, that's expressvpn.com slash Padilla for an extra three months. Support them, support us, and surf the web from anywhere in the world. Now, back to the world of Corpse Husband. What do you do in your time off? I don't have time off, man. Ever since all this started, I've just been working every single day. It's either work or trying to get comfortable in your chair and trying to get comfortable in your bed. So, I mean, hopefully I get to keep inciting chaos for at least a, a couple more months. Has being 
faceless and keeping your anonymous identity pushed you away from keeping contact with your real life friends and your family? A little bit. Some of the issue has been with my voice is like I never talk to anyone over the phone that I don't know. Because someone would be able to pinpoint who you are. When my Postmates driver can't find my house and they call me like, where do you live? I can't even pick up and be like, oh, I live here. Because next thing I know, I answer and he goes, corpse. <laughs> and, and, then, and then they know where I live too, you know what I mean? Like I'm afraid to, even, at, even right. at like doctor's appointments and like, just stuff like that, I, I'm afraid. You're afraid to, that the doctor might recognize yeah. you? <laughs> it's like, oh, get undressed for this MRI or whatever. Oh, nice meeting you, Corpse. As you're getting your colonoscopy. Yeah. Nicole asks, when people refer to Corpse, do you feel like they're referring to uh, a character or to you personally? I take it as me personally, I think, because how I act as Corpse is, is me anyway like how i'm talking to you right now and how i talk to people outside of youtube is a little bit different not because i want it to be but because there are certain things that i'm a i can't talk about on youtube i was and still am dealing with so much mental shit when i was doing those among us streams first starting like literally like 20 minutes before some of them i was literally like cutting my face with razor blades like it, and then i just get on in front of hundreds of thousands of people you know what i mean and it's like they don't see those things you know what i mean there's these things that you deal with that isn't necessarily for other people to to take part in and people kind of feel like everything that anyone who has any kind of following does is yeah. there to be judged so i guess yeah. you know there, there there is that benefit that you have being faceless that you don't have to divulge in why anything about your appearance has changed especially yeah. if it's something dealing with depression or anything like that yeah exactly it's like why are you sad you're famous <laughs> yes money helps so yeah. much but money can't solve everything and it, it especially can't solve mental health issues and the whole world is going through so much right now yeah. with covid and everything else and depression rates are higher than ever before it doesn't matter what your class is these things can affect you should we be grateful for having more uh possibilities and options because we yeah. are financially uh well off in many ways absolutely but that doesn't make people who are in the spotlight yeah. completely immune to dealing with any of those issues. How many celebrity suicides and artist suicides is it gonna take for people to be like, it, you know, it happens and all the hate comments and shit like that, like, we're people. <laughs> Joe Mama wants to know if there's ever been any artwork of you that's been so accurate that it scares you. Oh my God, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it is so scary. I mean, like, does, does any part of you think like, they know something they they, they like they, they like, see. i don't think they knew but it just blew my mind i'm gonna text it to you they did okay. a few of them but oh shit, dude that is exactly you it's so scary <laughs> they got everything right the hair the eye shape the eyebrows this looks it's like someone crazy. just straight up like went it looks in like a drawing photographed you i li when you sent this to me i literally thought that you just sent me a selfie <laughs> Are you ever going to do a face reveal? Last time we spoke, you said that you were so tempted you would sometimes take a <laughs> selfie, have your finger over the button, That's you would so drop your times. phone, you would say like, fate can decide this for me. I don't think I'm gonna face reveal on, on purpose anytime soon. It's just mm. way too much now. Do you feel like you're not being authentically yourself when you're not showing your face? Like the more that people know about me online, the less I can be open about myself in my private life. Because then like, oh, this matches up with corpse, like. You've kind of dug yourself into a hole. You backed yourself up into a corner with how much you've been honest about yourself. Because now, if you tell anyone anything real about yourself in yeah. person, yeah. It, would, it would line up too closely. You've exactly. almost chosen, inadvertently, yeah. but you've chosen to be your authentic self to the internet only. And therefore, yeah. your interactions in real life are inauthentic because you can't. You can't be authentic. I can't be authentic with people in my personal life because I was too authentic with people online. I'm just so unapologetically myself that it kind of hurts to like not be myself in any degree. So you're just rather not interact at all? Yeah, yeah, exactly. What do you think the biggest misconception is about you whenever i get on the phone with big artists or other big youtubers they're like all right drop it. what's what's your name what what do you look like and i'm like dude 
it's not a joke like i f***ing hate myself like deeply <laughs> nothing changes when you garner any kind of success in fact it just makes everything that you had before uh more difficult yeah. it, it amplifies everything for the most part i'd say it amplifies the issues that you already had if you have issues to begin with i can't personally think of anyone more deserving of the success that you've gotten i've felt that since the first time I met you. You're a very, very genu genuine person and you weren't afraid to be vulnerable and you're just so naturally kind and charismatic. And I know that you deal with issues with your, your self-esteem and your own image of yourself. But I mean, just coming from someone who interacts with a lot of people, I, I just want to tell you that I feel like you are so deserving of everything you have. And I don't think that you're going to lose it. Thank you very much. All right, you got five seconds to shout out or promote anything you want directly in the camera. Go. Sh shout out Bingus. Shout out <laughs> Bingus. All hell Bingus. All hell Bingus. Always su subscribe to Anthony Padilla's channel on every, on, on your dog's Instagram. On, on your <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Corpse. I feel like I understand the world of Corpse Husband just a little bit more. Yeah, it's complicated. I f***ing hate it here. After spending the day with Corpse, I've come to understand that despite the myriad of benefits that fame can bring, being in the public eye comes with its own unique set of complications. If one's identity is shrouded in mystery or not, we all have everyday struggles and a public-facing facade is only one aspect of any story. Dating. <laughs> Oh, God. That's it. That's the question. That's terrifying.